Well, hello again, sports fans. Today is the day when I'm going to make my latest attempt on my long standing goal of reaching 10 kilometres on 5.8 gigahertz video. The Matek F405 wing board that I've installed in my new Ranger has been performing pretty well flawlessly since I tuned it in. And I'm feeling fairly optimistic about today's flight. It's a beautiful sunny day with light winds, probably between 5 and 10 kilometres an hour, coming out of the north. And I have the field entirely to myself. The launch has gone well and I'm just climbing up to around about 100 metres to uh, flip it into loiter mode while I wander back to the flight box and start flying from the screen. She settles into a nice stable loiter pattern straight away. Doesn't appear to be having any trouble maintaining altitude. So I just uh, watch it for two or three circuits to make sure everything's all right. And then I decide it would probably be a good idea to test the return to home mode. And once again she goes in straight away and starts executing a nice stable return to home. And once she gets there she starts loitering about the home point as nice as you like. The previous test flights have given me a lot of confidence in the Rangers ability to maintain a decent climb rate on the 4S battery. So I've decided to just set a course straight away to the south and not bother about gaining the altitude uh, beforehand as I usually do. So I switch it into cruise mode point the nose south and just start applying a little bit of elevator. I add in a little bit of extra throttle to take into account the 5 to 10 km an hour tailwind that I'll be uh, flying with on the outward trip. She settles down pretty nicely and I uh, set about gaining the uh, 400 metres that I usually need to fly this particular course. The Ranger handles the task pretty easily and I achieve my target altitude just short of three kilometres out and then I switch it into 3D cruise mode which is essentially heading in altitude hold. Once again she settles in on a nice straight steady course and I knock the throttle back to around about 50%. So she's just coming up on the 4 kilometre mark and as is usually the case I start getting a little bit of video break up next to the mountain and need to make some minor adjustments to the uh, overlord antenna and I get the signal back again quite strongly. So we're just passing the 5 kilometre mark which is the furthest I've been with this particular model and everything is going quite smoothly. She's still holding a good steady course in 3D cruise mode. I'm not really having to touch the sticks at all mainly just twiddling with the antenna when I get the occasional fade out. The radio link quality starts to degrade just a little bit for a short while and then comes good again. This is the first time I've used link quality so I'm not sure what the normal behaviour of it should be but it's good to see it go back up to the 99%. So we just passed 7 kilometres and the video fade-outs are starting to become a little bit more frequent 
but twiddling the antenna seems to recover it without too much trouble. The ring is, seems to be being buffeted around a little bit more so I've upped the throttle to about 60% to see if that helps. It's only a minor effect though, I still haven't had to uh, touch the sticks since putting it into 3D cruise mode. So we're just coming up on 8 kilometres and uh, everything's going really, really well. I'm feeling pretty confident that uh, today will be the day. I didn't notice it at the time, but looking at the video I can see that the link quality started to degrade a little bit here. The video signal also started to fade out and then dropped out completely and I was never able to recover it. It looks like the motor actually cuts off at this point, but I'm not sure why. I'm still twiddling with the receiver antennas trying to get the picture back and I don't change modes for about 30 seconds when it becomes apparent that it's not coming back so I switch it into return to home mode. At this point I'm fairly confident that I'll actually get the video picture back relatively quickly when the plane turns around but as it turns out to be the case that never actually happens. The Mobius footage shows that after the motor cut the plane started a fairly shallow descent and did turn around but uh, it didn't straighten on the home course it continued to execute a very very wide turn while descending. So I don't think it went into either return to home or fail safe mode. I'm guessing it must have put itself into air mode which I believe provides basic stabilisation but no real course holding capability. Whatever mode it was in though, it seemed to do a reasonably good job of bringing the unpowered ranger down fairly gently. Of course all this was completely unknown to me at the time. I was still fairly confident that it was on its way home and I was just having video problems and it wasn't for another 20 minutes or so that I finally decided it wasn't coming back and that I'd better go and look for it. I had to travel about 7 kilometres south down the road before I picked up a signal from the T-Beacon and was able to receive the last recorded GPS coordinates. So here we are about 9 kilometres from home down a back road in a very similar paddock to where I lost the Ranger last time. And according to my GPS, it is about one and a half, one and a quarter kilometres over in that direction. There seems to be an open gate here with a road which I'm going to walk down, but I fully expect to find 92 barbed wire fences, which is what happened last time I came into this area. Anyway, here we go. I'm getting a very faint signal from the video, which doesn't look like the OSD is going, but hard to say. But the uh, T-Beacon has given me some coordinates. So this is uh, some DVR footage of the signal I was picking up on the video receiver when I uh, pointed it in the direction that the T-Beacon was saying the model was in. So it was encouraging to see that the video transmitter was still working which gave me some hope that the plane wasn't a complete write-off. Seven hundred and fifty metres and this is the first fence I haven't been able to avoid. It's not too bad, it's got some plain wire I should be able to squeeze through. I would have thought I could see the plane from here, but I can't. 
looks like there's a little hollow over there. I'm hoping it must be in that. And we will see. So I'm within a hundred metres of it before I spot it. Don't know whether you'll see it on this, but it's on that fence across the creek bed, halfway up the bank. So hidden from view till now. So I'm rooted, I've been through three fences. I'm bleeding. My clothes are ripped. God, I love that boy. So it turns out the rang is in uh, pretty good condition considering the uh, wings bar seems to have bent, the wings are flopping down a little bit and there seems to be a little nick in one of the wings which might have caught that fence as it went over it but uh, everything else is pretty good, the camera's still on it. I'll just have to check the, the GPS has popped off double-sided tape but it's still working and obviously still connected to the to the uh, beacon the mobius isn't running but I would expect the battery would have died by now but the gimbal's still working. The wing retaining clips are still functioning. The wings come off. That could have been a lot worse. So without the telemetry from the OSD, I'm finding it a bit hard to actually figure out what happened. It looked like the link quality was starting to fade, but it doesn't look like the ranger went in to return the home or fail safe at any stage. I really don't know what caused the motor to cut. I've set INAV up so that air mode is the default mode, but there shouldn't be a condition where it actually comes into play. I'm also curious about why the motor and the video went out at the same time and I'm wondering whether this is one of these INAV reboots that I've read about. I've powered it back up since getting it home and everything seems to be working apart from the rudder uh, servo which seems to be completely stripped and the control rod is uh, hanging loose from the uh, servo horn. It's not going to take much to get it back in the air, but I must admit I'm very disappointed and uh, the confidence I had built up has now dissipated. So I guess a lot more testing is in order before I embark on uh, another attempt.